rock and roll legend. The crazy thing about Roy Orbison is from 1959 to 1964, he had 21 top 40 hits. He dies too soon with three young sons. He had secretly always wanted us to be musicians, but he wasn't going to push. Does he send them on a musical mission from beyond the grave? And then they kind of rubbed my eyes and then looked at this. He said, I've got this cassette of this song that nobody has heard before. Will this strange inheritance bring Roy and his boys together again? Had you always dreamt of playing with your dad? Always, yes. <laughs> Mercy. I'm Jamie Colby, and today I am cruising into Nashville, Tennessee, Music City. I'm on my way to meet the sons of rock legend Roy Orbison. Turns out the man who gave the world, oh, pretty woman, only the lonely, and you got it, left his heirs an unexpected treasure and possibly the opportunity of a lifetime. I'm Alex Orbison. Even though my dad, Roy Orbison, passed away in 1988, my brothers and I, 25 years later, found something that would help us realize a lifelong dream. Alex. Hello. How are you? I'm in Hendersonville, just outside Nashville, and Alex has invited me to a musical landmark. Incredible. I can't believe I'm here. Welcome. Thank you so much. And the Cash Cabin. What is this place? Johnny Cash built this cabin in the 80s as a getaway, one of the best recording studios in the world. And the families were close? Yeah, our families go back to the 50s when uh, Johnny and Roy were roommates and label mates at Sun Records. I can't wait to learn more, and I would love to see you inside. Of course. This cabin has been a creative refuge for dozens of major recording artists. But it's also like home to Roy's boys and a link to their late father. What was he like as a dad? He was pretty wonderful as a dad. Born in 1936, Roy spent much of his youth in Vernon, Texas. I heard that he wrote his first song at eight. He definitely had his first radio show as an eight-year-old. He walked down with his guitar and knocked on the door, and he said, yeah, my name's Roy Orbison, and I want to play some songs for you guys. By the end of the year, he had his own show every Saturday. In 1955, a fateful meeting with Johnny Cash at a local TV station sparks Roy's musical career and gets him an invitation to Sun Records in Memphis, Tennessee. Not long after... Roy marries his childhood sweetheart, Claudette Frady. They move to Nashville, and Roy rockets to the top of the charts with a string of hits, including Oh, Pretty Woman in 1964. Was Oh, Pretty Woman a game changer? People love the song. It really made him into an international superstar. Roy and Claudette have three boys, Roy Dwayne, Anthony, and Wesley. Roy can't ask for more, either professionally or personally. Then in 1966, tragedy strikes. Claudette and my dad were coming back from the drag races on their motorcycles. At the end of the ride, a truck had pulled out and Claudette was killed instantly. As a 30-year-old widower with three young sons, Roy relies on his parents, who live across the street, for child care, while he sues himself by writing and touring. Back in Nashville, young Wesley finds comfort in his father's songs. That's kind of how I'd visit with him, because he was on the road all the time. So uh, those are just always would go to those records and listen. While on tour in Leeds, England in 1968, Roy's drummer insists he go out and have some fun. At a nightclub, Roy meets 17-year-old beauty Barbara Jacobs. He ran into my mom, and my dad looked over and said, Grab that girl. I'm going to marry her. The two fall in love instantly, starting a long-distance romance. Just as Roy's getting on his feet, he suffers another devastating loss. On September 15th, a fire rips through his home in Nashville. Where was he when the fire happened? He was doing the last show of a tour in England. 
he was showing pictures of the boys and how happy he was to go home. And there was a knock on the door in the night, and then that's when he found out. Roy's parents and three-year-old Wesley are able to escape. But his two older sons, 10-year-old Roy Dwayne and six-year-old Tony, are killed. Was it something your dad was able to talk about? I've gone back through the interviews, and what he said is, if you look back and you're not a crazy person, then you'd be grateful for what you did have and not what you don't have. It's Barbara Jacobs who helps him through his grief. In 1969, they marry and go on to have two boys, Roy Jr. and Alex. For now, Roy's career takes a back seat to family life. Did he encourage you guys to play? He didn't push us. He just left guitars all around the house for us to find. Had you always dreamt of playing with your dad? Always, yes. As the 1980s unfold, the entertainment world rediscovers Roy Orbison. Linda Ronstadt covers Blue Bayou and Van Halen Pretty Woman. Both become big hits. Then in 1986, director David Lynch chooses Roy's song In Dreams for his film Blue Velvet. There again, my dad's on the forefront of some groundbreaking thing because David Lynch loved his music. Roy Orbison is making a comeback. He's inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with none other than the boss, Bruce Springsteen, doing the honors. And, I'm just killing time. and while Roy works on recording a new album called Mystery Girl, producer Jeff Lynn introduces him to Tom Petty. The three, along with old friends Bob Dylan and George Harrison, start jamming at each other's houses. Out of that was born the Traveling Wilburys. Traveling Wilburys Volume 1 is released in October 1988, while Mystery Girl is slated for release in February. It's a milestone Roy never reaches. On December 6, 1988, he dies of a massive heart attack while visiting his parents' home in Nashville. He's 52 years old. I was so crushed as a 12-year-old kid. There was just such a loss. There's no, no real way to describe it in words. But those classic songs and timeless sound live on. Orbison continues to be irresistible to Hollywood. A year after his death, Pretty Woman the movie makes Julia Roberts a superstar. And Orbison becomes as big in death as he was in life. He also leaves behind something very special to fill the hole left in his young boy's lives. The inheritance is strange, but the legacy is love. That's next. But first, our strange inheritance quiz question. What was Roy Orbison's first number one single? Ooby Dooby, Only the Lonely, Running Scared, or Crying? The answer in a moment. 